Vanakkam, Namaste, Dr. S. Gauri, Vice Chancellor, University of Madras, Mr. Andrew Collister, Vice Consul of the Australian Consulate General, Chennai, Dr. S. Armstrong, Professor and Head of Department of English, University of Madras, Ms. Curly Saunders, the keynote speaker, Australian writer, artist, and educator, my friend and colleague at IASA, Professor Pradeep Trikha, and of course, Dr. Supala. Pandya Rajan, who has played such an important role in organizing this conference on a very important topic in my view, mapping the multicultural mosaic, understanding contemporary Australian literature in India. I'm delighted and honored to participate in the inaugural session, and I apologize at the outset for not being able to come both in person, in fact, and also I'll join you live because I have a series of meetings lined up. But this is, I suppose, the uh, fallout of the virtual mode. At one level, we can engage and connect with each other very easily. But at another level, it's only different forms of virtual connectivity, right? Whether we can join in live or we record our, uh, you know, small uh, inputs and present them. Anyhow, the topic is of great interest to us, especially in IASA, because our association was founded about 20 years ago in uh, the year 2000. And last year at the, or the year before rather, before the Corona year, we, we uh, or before Corona broke out, let me put it that way. In January, we celebrated our 20th anniversary at the Banaras in the university, but a very big conference in Australian studies. We had some notable critics from Australia present, all the way from Australia in person, live, which included Professor Bill Armstrong, Professor Paul Sharad, and Professor Peter Gale. And there were, of course, a host of other scholars present. And I very much look forward to the next year's conference to be hosted or rather uh, you know, the 2022, because it's a biennial conference series that we run to be hosted by this very department of English at Madras University, which is also the recipient of the direct aid project grant from the consulate. So I'm very grateful to the consulate, to the Honorable Mr. Barry O'Farrell, Mr. Andrew Collister, and uh, everybody else who is rekindling this Australia-India connection. I mentioned rekindling because at IASA, we found that our, our funding from Australia uh, was almost cut off completely in 2010, I think. And uh, Australia-Indian relations also, uh, and literary relations particularly, have been through a bit of a seesaw. I say this uh, because many of us who are in this field of Australian studies, even tangentially, uh, were connected deeply with Australia because of the Australia-India Council Fellowship. We spent stints in Australia, we got to know writers personally, and this cemented and uh, fomented, I should say, if not fermented, uh, the ties, the literary ties. And uh, I bring this up because when, we, when it comes to Australian studies, especially literary studies, India continues to be a very large market. The population of Australia is about 25, 26 million, and the population of India is 1.3 billion. We have a large number of English departments all over India. And we have the advantage of having started Australian literary studies probably before you know, anybody else, even before they were taken really seriously in Australia. I may be challenged on this, but I'm thinking about the days in the 1960s when Professor C.D. Narasamaya, who was a pioneer in Commonwealth literary studies in India, also brought in Australian writers in his Commonwealth writing syllabi, and others followed suit. So my point is when we review the history of Australian literary studies in India, we come up with a strange uh, paradox, which has also been identified in the theme note. But the way I present or articulate this paradox is slightly different. In the theme note, it says that uh, canonical writers are the only ones studied, and that is the paradox. And uh, the real Australian literature, that's what it says, real is in inverted commas, the real Australian literature is multidimensional in its themes and genres, and demonstrates rich, creative, and critical traditions. 
And this conference is meant to get away from the canonical, you know, to the non-canonical, the real mosaic. Now, metaphors such as mosaic, multiculturalism, which is not a metaphor, but actually a theory and ideology, have had their share of ups and downs, and I won't try and problematize them that much. But, but the point I'm trying to make is the paradox, as I see it, is that the first four decades or even five decades of Australian studies in India was characterized by pioneers such as C.D. Narasamaya, then Alur Janaki Raman, and his student, of course, is Professor Pradeep Trekha, who individually went to Australia, brought books, introduced writers into our curricula, uh, and did it more or less at a personal level through their personal efforts. It was driven by, I would say, extraordinary individuals. The second phase, when the, uh, you know, IASA the, uh, was founded, uh, Indian Association for the Study of Australia was founded, was around 2000, it was almost 40 years after some form of Australian literary studies was already prevalent in India. When we tried to institutionalize it in, in about 2000, uh, and Australian studies became a part of the JNU curriculum. We had pioneers like Professor Santosh Sarin who took it forward. The paradox is very soon thereafter, just about 10 years thereafter, it would seem that uh, the driving forces, which included funding from Australia in the form of Australia India Council fellowships, much of this dried up. And Australian studies, in a way, went into a lull. Of course, the silver lining was in 2007. The Eastern Branch under Professor Deb Bandapadhyay opened up and they've been very active. So personally, I'm delighted and very happy. It's an auspicious new start that the Australian Consulate and the High Commission is once again wish, once again wishes to collaborate and intervene in a very, should I say, positive manner to give a fillip to Australian studies in India. So I welcome this. I hope that uh, such collaborations proceed. And at the same time, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, I think that uh, the theme note talks about the predilection for comparative studies because Australian writers, except the canonical ones, are not seen as if they are, you know, whatever, um, you know, worthy of curricular study on their own. Of course, this is changing, but we are, in, we are interested in IASA in a bi-directional flow because I spoke about the population asymmetry in the beginning. But there's another kind of asymmetry that when the funding comes from Australia, we find that it's an Australian show that the Indians brought, uh, you know, to listen. So this asymmetry also needs to cease for which we must raise our own funding. And there has to be a critical engagement from both sides. I'm especially heartened by the new strategic partnerships which are developing, not only because of Quad, but because of other reasons between Australia and India, which may uh, help us branch out away from just literary studies into many other areas. And I think it's time to rethink notions of multiculturalism, especially after really dangerous uh, movements such as anti uh, I mean, I would call them anti-culture movements, cancel culture movements, bullying in the name of various kinds of, uh, you know, should I say political correctness, and really have a critical engagement, open ourselves up uh, to a very rich dialogue. And this is really what I look forward to. I congratulate the English department. The program is superb. We have many eminent writers and scholars from Australia and India joining in. And I hope we can take this forward and uh, next year, come up with a three-day wonderful conference in which we would certainly like to participate at as IASA. And I might wear my dual hat as the director of the Indian Institute of Advanced Study. We are housed in the Viceregal Lodge erstwhile of the British Empire. Uh, and it's a wonderful uh, kind of Jacobethan building, as they call it. And we can even host one of these conferences there, I'm sure that uh, it'll be a wonderful experience, uh, post-colonial, albeit for people from both Australia and India. With these words, I thank you all, and I wish uh, this conference every success in, in uh, the sessions to come. Thank you.